Hey guys, it's James here. Today I'm going to show you how to trim the elusive pinstriping brush and also how to mix and reduce high temp and low temp reducers and why we use that stuff. So stay tuned, let's get to it. Okay guys, here we go. We got the elusive, dangerous pinstriping brush, right? Dagger style brush. So when you pull it out of the package, you can see that the there's a little bit of sizing on it, uh, water-based sizing. You can see that the hairs are all over the place. Usually what I do is I just put it in my mouth and give it a little, a little rinse there. Now, so this is really, really, really important before you start pinstriping. See, we have our flat side here. That's always going to go to the left side if you're right-handed, okay? So what I want you to see here is if you can see it, there are these little hairs right there. What those hairs are going to do is they're going to grab paint and make your striping look sloppy. You'd be surprised what those little hairs can do. Now, very, very important, we're going to trim those hairs. And when we trim, we got to be at a 90 degree angle to that. If we're at a 45 or something like this, it's not going to, the brush isn't going to perform exactly how we want it to. This is very, very, very important. All right, so I gave it another, another mouthwash. <laughs> and we want to point those things out, right? Okay, sorry I was out of frame there. Just want to get those so they... Okay, so we're going to put it on a flat surface. We're not going to touch these hairs down here. We're not going to touch those. All we're going to do... Whoops. So we'll drag it on the surface a little bit and that'll, that'll slide it out and that's going to show us real quick these little guys right there. We're going to take an X-Acto knife and we're going to put the heel down. Put the heel down first and then we are going to roll and chop. And we'll pull away. That's how much hair we're talking about. That little guy right there. Now you can see that I left a hair here. I realize that this is really, really specific, but you got to do it. It's real important or you're never going to get a good, you're never going to get a good corner. You're never going to get a good starting point. So that is a trimmed brush. So that's the first thing we do. Okay. That's the first thing we do with that brush. And again, just look at that little, little piece of hair. They can't adjust that when they, these are all hand wrapped. So they can't adjust that when it's time to, when they hand wrap these things. They put them in there, a certain amount of, of squirrel hair, and that's what we get, okay? Let's move on to the next thing. Okay guys, next thing, we've had a couple questions about how we open these crazy looking square bottles. When you get the bottle, the can, the lid's gonna be down like that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pull these two wings up, pop it up, Use the wings to unscrew it. Then what you're going to get is you're going to get this seal right there. Take a popsicle stick or a screwdriver. Put it under there. Wedge that thing up. Boom. And toss that little piece out. Throw it out. There you go. So what we're doing here, the next thing I'm going to show you is the reason why we have a low temp and a high temp producer. So you can see here, for temps above 70 degrees, for temps below 70 degrees. So what this work, how this works is when you're striping and it's really, really hot outside or inside your shop, what's going to happen is your alpha enamel is going to start to, or any enamel for that matter, is going to start to dry up too quickly. We got to keep that flowing right off the brush. And if it's too hot outside, it's going to dry up too quick and it's going to get sticky. It's not going to perform like you need it to do. And I'm going to show you in a minute 
the right consistency so it performs. And you're going to use that consistency in hot weather and in cold weather. So the same thing goes for our low temp reducer. When it's cold outside, what's going to happen is it's going to flow for too long and it's going to take too long to dry. Okay? So when it's really hot outside, you're going to want to use our high temp reducer because what that's going to do is it's going to slow down that drying time. When it's cold outside, you're going to use our low temp reducer because it's going to be cold outside and you're going to want to speed it up. What this does is this speeds it up, it speeds up your drying time. Okay. So the next thing we're going to get into is I'm going to show you the right consistency that you're going to want to mix with. So you're going to need some paint. One of the reducers, depending on how cold it is or how hot it is in your shop or outside, wherever you're striping. And we sell some of these stainless steel mixing cups. They're great. You're not hurting the environment. They're made one time, you clean them out, and they last forever. Stand by. Okay, guys, let's go to mixing our alpha enamel to proper consistency for pinstriping, dagger style pinstriping. So when you get your bottle, we sell bottles in one ounce, in two and a half ounce, in five ounce, in eight ounce, in 16 ounces, and we sell them by the gallon. When you get your bottle, you're gonna have this red cap. That seals it and keeps it airtight. You're just gonna pinch that and pull that out. Usually what I do is just wipe it, and then I throw it out. We'll just put it by the side right now. One of our stainless steel cups, just, Put a little bit in. So you can pour straight from the bottle or we have these nifty little flip caps, like a shampoo cap, which I like to use. Uh, you're also going to make sure that you shake the heck out of this. We don't know how long it's been sitting on the shelf and we put so much pigment in it, the pigment settles to the bottom and you want your paint to settle. That just means there's a lot of good stuff in it. So I'm just going to pour some in there. You can see the consistency where it's coming out, right? It's a little thick. We can't stripe with that. That is going to slow us down and it's going to, it's not going to want to come off the brush. So it's a little chilly here in Detroit. We've got our stock paint right out of the bottle. We've got our low temp reducer because like I said, it's a little chilly here. And what we're trying to get to is a consistency of light maple syrup. This is probably maple syrupy. The consistency is probably maple syrupy straight from the bottle. I, I would guess. I suppose it depends on, <laughs> depends on what kind of maple syrup you have. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to put a few drops per ounce of paint. That was a little much. So we put a little much in. We're just going to put a little more paint in to balance that out. All right. Our popsicle stick. We're going to stir the heck out of this. Really want to get that stirred up, okay? Stir, scrape the sides. You know, you don't have to stir it up for five minutes. But I want you to see, let's move some of this stuff out of the way so you can see what we are, what our consistency is like, okay? All right. So, after you stir, Pull your stick up. That's about what we want. We want that to flow off. Essentially what that's telling us is it's going to flow off the brush the same way. We don't want it dripping and we don't want it globbing like it was straight. Let me show you what dripping is going to look like. This, this is if we put too much in. And this is what this is going to do. If it's too thin, this is going to, it's not going to lay down in a stripe. It's going to it's just going to spread all over the place. You won't have any control. You need that stickiness, that thickness, so you can get that brush to drag on the surface. If it's thin like this, your brush isn't going to drag. It's going to slide. Okay? So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to show you a couple little uh, palleting techniques so we can get to striping. Okay, I've mixed up the right consistency. I got a little on my hand. I'm a pretty messy pinstriper, so this is normal for me. 
There's some people out there can that can stripe without getting paint all over themselves. I can keep it off the surface, but it usually ends up all over my hands. Okay, we've got our proper consistency. Move that over there so you can see it. Okay. Drips, 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 drips. There we go. We've got our trimmed brush. Now this is the most important part of pinstriping. Right, what I'm about to do right here is the most important part. If you don't do this correctly, you're never gonna get a good line. What we're trying to do is we're trying to train this paint to flow off this brush, okay? This brush is dry, there's no sizing on it because I dipped it, well, I put it in my mouth and sucked anything off of it. But, so it's ready to go, right? I'm dipping it in there, making sure to get paint all the way back to the ferrule, to the wrap. Okay, first things first. And what I'm using is I'm using a glossy piece of, oh, you can use glossy piece of paper, or I like to use catalogs. Some people use no, uh, phone books, if you can even find one of those anymore. So what I'm doing here, the reason why I like the uh, glossy is because all the, the paint and the chemicals that are in the paint, they don't sink into that. They don't absorb into the, into the um, phone book. I'm using this glossy paper, it's a sealed surface, so all the paint stays up on top. And if you can see what I'm doing, here I'll do it where it's a little lighter, okay? This is our chocolate brown paint. And what I'm doing here is I'm dragging, I'm putting that ferrule all the way to the bottom, and I'm giving it a drag, baby. And then I'm flipping and I'm giving it a drag. And I'm not pushing down real hard, but I'm making sure that all of that paint doesn't need to be up on the brush and, and you don't want it on the wrap either. I'll wipe that off before I start striping. But you want that paint all the way back to here. So what we've been doing by doing this is we've been telling those bristles, hey man, we're gonna just let this paint flow off of there. After you do that, a few times you'll feel it and you'll feel the drag. Now that is a dangerous weapon right there. We're ready to stripe. All right, guys. Let's walk through a couple basic dagger style strokes here. Again, we're gonna, we've got the consistency of our paint correct for our temperature. Dragging the butt down, flipping it. You know, we're not doing this. Just dragging it. Training that paint to come off those bristles. Okay. So, first and foremost, we want to leave as many points. We want to put as many points down as we can. As far as holding the brush, we, don't, we never want to do it up in the air like this. You'll never get a straight line. So we've got the brush loaded. You're feeling that drag. Take the brush, flat side, if you're right-handed, flat side to the left. Got my points down, my pinky finger. This, this hand is stabilizing that hand and I got another hand down here, as much as possible. I'm gonna push down and I'm just gonna drag straight back. The harder I push, the wider that line's gonna get. So if you wanna do that, that's a technique, but if you want it to be in between strokes, you're gonna pal it again. If you want it to be consistent, the speed that you pull and the pressure that you push down has to be about the same. Now, the paint will compensate a little bit, I recommend not a lot of coffee before you do this. Straight line, pretty straight. It's difficult with all these lights and camera in the way. So that's one stroke you're gonna to pull towards you. Here's how I do a half moon. Or maybe they call it a, I don't know what they call it. I don't care, this is what I do. Okay, this is gonna be a half, half moon we're calling it, right? 
I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm holding the brush like this. I hold it like this. Some people get their arm all crooked like this by holding it like that. I hold it like this. I've got my points touching. I'm going to press down. And I'm just going to go and I'm slowly twisting the hairs. I don't know if you can see that. But as I'm turning, I'm twisting the hairs. I'm twisting that brush a little bit. The brush isn't staying straight. If the brush stays straight and I try to do that curve, that's what we get. We get an inconsistent line. That's not what we want. But at, it, this is a rudder. This axe is a rudder. Imagine if you were using a, a razor blade and you were cutting something. You turn that razor blade as you cut. Same thing with the pinstriping brush, okay? All right, so there's that one. There's the underhanded one, which is the same principle. Pressing down. Whoops, this thing's moving a little bit on me. Pressing down. Curving. Coming on up. Okay, you can see I pressed a little bit harder and it made the line thicker. Thin, you can get real thin with these. Real, real thin. Or you get real thick. Now you don't want to go so thick that you're dragging the whole brush because it's going to give you inconsistencies. But within reason, you can press. You can get a nice 3 16 line or a nice, I would say that's a, that's a 16th right there. Just slowly pulling back. Okay, so there's those two. Then what we can do is we can put these two strokes together. We'll call it an S. S stroke, okay? We're pressing down, getting our thickness there. And as we turn, as we're making the curve, we're turning the brush. We get down to our lower spot, then we turn the brush the other way. Now, I messed up there because I'm this camera's getting in the way. I promise I'm not making excuses here. Okay, we're going to do it again here. I'm turning, I'm twisting this brush like that as I'm coming around the corner. As I'm coming around that curve is what I mean to say. All right, we got that. Then watch the end of that brush. I'm turning it that way to make the curve like that. I, I keep messing up here because it's a weird angle. Um, but I could show you here. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I can't. So anyway, you get the point. You're always going to want to be, whatever direction you're going, you got to twist that brush. Because if you don't, the hairs, the way these hairs are designed, they're going to flatten out and they're going to give you inconsistencies. So usually what I do is, when I was learning how to stripe, I practice. Some people say take a gallon of paint and practice, practice, practice and, until you're done with that gallon. I learned the thousand stroke method where I did all these strokes. Oh, there's one more I want to show you. I did all these strokes a thousand times each one, and it goes by faster than you think. So here's a vertical S that we're going to do. Same thing. I'm twisting the brush, coming down. I get to my low point. I'm going to twist it the other way. Turning, turning, turning that brush. Get to the low point and twist it, turn it the other way. All right, we could do the other way. So you got a palette in between. And I've got a little bit of reducer over here because sometimes this, this dries up a little bit. We always want to keep that same consistency. You got me? All right, back and forth. Back and forth, not sloppy like this, all the way down. All right, now... We're going to come this way. And still, same thing. I'm twisting, twisting, twisting. I get to the low point. I'm going to twist the other way. Right? Bump the camera a little bit. All right. Twisting, 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 twisting. And then I'm going to twist the other way right there. There you go. Okay, so you guys understand the principles here. I'm going to do a lot more videos about this. So this will get you started. I appreciate you guys watching and you can give me a thumbs up on YouTube. 
Go to our website, alpha6corporation.com, for our products. Our Instagram is at alpha6paint. Our TikTok is alpha6corp. And I think that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Turn this motherfucker off.